On the 4th of November, 1839, thousands of Chartist sympathisers, led by John Frost, marched on Newport, South Wales. They were protesting against the detention of fellow Chartists being held at the town's Westgate Hotel and the rejection earlier that year of the People's Charter, calling for the democratic reform of Parliament. At least 22 were killed in the ensuing clashes with troops and the leaders of the Rising were later convicted of treason and sentenced to be hung, drawn and quartered. Who were the Chartists? Chartism is regarded as the first national working class political movement calling for democratic reform. Its People's Charter called for a vote for every man over the age of 21. The establishment of a secret ballot, the abolishment of the property qualification to be an MP, payment for members of parliament, constituencies to be of equal size in terms of population and annual elections. The population of South Wales at this point was largely working class, with employment centred around the coal and iron industries. These industries were largely owned by wealthy English families. This stark economic inequality, compounded by low wages and poor working conditions, drove thousands to Chartism. It has been estimated that there were around 25,000 Chartists in Glamorgan and Monmouthshire alone. On the 14th of July, 1839, the first mass Chartist petition was presented to the House of Commons. It was over three miles long, with over 1.2 million signatures. However, MPs rejected a proposal to even consider its aims by 235 votes to 46. This led to Chartist violence across the country, including the Bull Ring riots in Birmingham. Tension in South Wales was further heightened by the conviction of Henry Vincent. Vincent was a popular Chartist leader, who was particularly active in South Wales and the West Country. On the 7th of May 1839, he was arrested in London under the instructions of Newport magistrates for participating in a riotous assemblage. He was later convicted at Monmouthshire Hall and sentenced to imprisonment for one year on 2nd of August, 1839. Chartist frustration boiled over and on the night of the 3rd of November, thousands of Chartists and Chartist sympathisers began their march on Newport from across South Wales. The marches were divided into three main contingents. John Frost led a group from Sir Howie Valley through Blackwood, Zephaniah Williams from Pontypool and William Jones from Ebu Vale. The marchers planned to come together at Newport, but Jones's group never arrived. The Chartists who made it to Newport accumulated around the Westgate Hotel, where it was believed Chartist prisoners were being held. The Chartists arrived armed with a range of weapons, including pistols, pikes, homemade swords and agricultural tools. Here, a brief but bloody battle took place between the Chartists and the soldiers of the 45th Regiment. Around 20 Chartists were killed and approximately 50 injured. This was the greatest number of casualties inflicted by British soldiers on their fellow citizens in the 19th century. Following the failed uprising, Frost, Williams and Jones were arrested and charged with high treason. The jury found them guilty but recommended leniency in sentencing. However, the Lord Chief Justice announced that they were each to be hung, drawn and quartered. This was the last time the sentence would be passed in England or Wales. The public was outraged about this punishment and so the sentence was later changed to transportation for life. This too was deeply controversial. As one petition to Parliament puts it, these three men are about to be transported for life, although it is as clear as the sun at noonday that they ought to be pardoned. The three men were transported to Van Diemen's Land, Australia, but public protest did not quell. In the 1840s, hundreds of thousands of signatures appeared on petitions from all over the country, asking for the men to be pardoned. Debates on the fate of the Newport instigators would be a frequent topic of discussion in Parliament in the 1840s. Twice motions were submitted in the Commons to present an address to the Queen asking for their pardon, once by Thomas Duncombe in 1846 and once by Fergus O'Connor in 1848. Each was defeated. In 1854, the prisoners were finally pardoned after having spent 15 years banished on the condition they would never return to British territory. The second pardon in 1856 allowed them to return to Britain, although only Frost did. He was warmly greeted by a crowd of thousands in Newport in August of that year. He continued to play an active part in political life, but never regained his former status. The Chartist movement declined in the late 1840s and early 1850s, but by 1918, all but one of its aims had been achieved.
culminating in 1918 with the representation of the People Act, which gave the vote to all men over the age of 21.